guys it is 4 a.m. I set an alarm for like three hours after I went to sleep I am currently icing my face with matcha to make it less puffy it happens to be Wednesday which means that I need to film a video which I meant to do you know over the past like two days that I've been at fashion week so I thought I would just wake up bright and early today and do it Ooh, so fucking tired anyways I'm gonna chug this matcha now and get filming. Hey guys. Hi, okay. I just filmed my video and I'm already running late. Okay, hi. Holy shit. <laughs> just, I feel like you don't need an introduction. <laughs> so yeah, this is Carly Kloss. Obviously she's a model, but she is also the founder of Code with Klossy, which is a free summer camp for girls who are interested in learning how to code. Please forgive me in the following clips if I'm really awkward or like don't really know what the fuck to do with my face. I have been reblogging photos of Carly Kloss on my Tumblr <laughs> since like 2011. And yes, I did dig through my actual Tumblr to find that photo amongst other gems, such as this necklace that we all thought was cute in 2012 for some reason, this gif of Hillary Clinton swerving her own husband to kiss Obama on the cheek, and this video of a man pole dancing while playing Jingle Bells on a clarinet. Honestly, all three of those things are somehow still on brand for me. Hi, I'm here with Carly, and we are on our way to the Serena Williams show yes. slash presentation. I think it's actually a combination of a talk. She's talking with Anna Wintour this morning, and that'll be really interesting. I laugh. I'm, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I'm sorry. No, don't be nervous. I'm, oh, goodness. I am I think I'm professional. Watch me like keep this all in the vlog. People will just yeah. see me like completely embarrassed myself. No. <laughs> okay, so one question I yes. had for you was, um, so you took time off in mm -hmm. the middle of your modeling career to go to NYU, which mm -hmm. I think is amazing. It takes a lot of courage to step away from something that you feel like you just have like such momentum in. Mm -hmm. What was yeah. that decision process like and how did you stay true to it? Oh, look at you journalist over here. <laughs> you know, I've been working in this industry as a model since I was 15, 14 years old, really. I did my first Teen Vogue shoot when I was 14, when I was in eighth grade. And then when I was in ninth grade, my freshman year of high school, I walked in Calvin Klein for New York Fashion Week and that like immediately started this global career. And I all of a sudden, my freshman year, like first semester, first month of school was gone for three weeks because I got these opportunities one after the next just to start this career and to walk in runway shows in New York, Milan, Paris. And I always juggled my education throughout high school and when I graduated high school, I wanted to take a minute, take a year off school, fully commit to and like dive into building my career. And what I kind of realized at a certain point is that life is long and I had this gut feeling that I wanted to and needed to keep growing and, and put myself in a traditional college environment like NYU and I wanted to experience that even if it meant that I was gonna maybe lose momentum in my career. It sometimes can be scary to like, you don't make a change because right? you feel like it might stop and I, I think I had enough confidence in myself to know that if I wanted to be modeling for 50 years to come that people would respect my decision to invest in myself and to go back to school and that they would still support me afterwards and also I was willing to take that risk that if they didn't support me afterwards I'd be okay because I knew I like really genuinely wanted to to go back to school. And it's not so like black and white. In addition to your work in fashion, Serena, you've launched Serena Ventures, the investment companies that embrace diverse leadership. Around 2016, I learned that companies were venture backed. 98% goes to men, minorities even less. Congratulations, everybody. I'll see you later. I'll see you. Hi, girl. Hello. Oh my god. 
<laughs> advanced That's Ubering so with Anna Laura. Seriously, <laughs> advanced Ubering. You just <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. Okay, so very important thing that's happening today. Ashley has a big photo shoot. And I was just saying, I should give her some pointers. Having your photograph taken is just not a natural experience. And I think the best thing you can do is just this sounds so cliche, but just be yourself and feel really confident in your own skin. The confidence that comes from the inside truly is so cliche, but that really comes through in a photograph. For me, I know what angles I like best of myself, which sounds so vain, but actually just like makes it easier to get a photo that you're it's happy with. Yeah. <laughs> ask to see a test shot. Don't feel like you can't ask to see how it looks because this is you. When you're posing, do you know in your head what the photo will look like when it comes out? Because I can never tell. I have like a sixth sense. Sick sixth sense. <laughs> so yes. I've just been on so many traditional kind of photo shoots. If I'm on a studio set and I know the lighting and I know that I'm jumping and I'm holding a bag and my jacket is flying and they want the hair to fly a certain way. I have done it so many times without even seeing the photograph. I can tell if my hair was in place, if my jacket moved, if the bag's in the right position. It's weird, it's like you do anything for 10,000 hours and you learn how to be a perfectionist at it. What about you? Can you tell when you take a shot, when you do a vlog, if you get the shot in one go? Ooh, I might not have perfected my sixth sense yet. I think I have to work on it. I think I generally have a sense, but I tend to assume that my footage is worse than it actually is. And then I'm like, oh, this video was horrible. Like every shot was shaky. She said, not yet knowing that every single clip in this video is extremely shaky. And then I go into and the edit. I'm like, I can make this work. Well, that's also probably, are you a perfectionist? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm trying to get over it. Are you as well? <sighs> I'm a perfectionist with some things and I'm trying to get over it because that self-criticism is only destructive. You know that you're really good at what you do and why you even without yourself that the footage isn't good, I didn't, you know, like why do we even do that? I don't know if that's like a woman thing or if that's a human thing. That perfectionism can really drive you and has certainly drived me to like push myself to be better but also you gotta keep it in perspective and like can't let it self-destruct you, you know? Yeah, for a long time I thought that I couldn't be good at my job if I wasn't always like nervous about it and always kind of like picking myself apart. Yeah. But I think there's room to be like confident and good. Absolutely. I don't know, I think like, I forgot what I was gonna say, I'm oh. so tired. <laughs> no I, I thought something, I thought something good and then I forgot. <laughs> I do that all the time. Little brain fart, but okay. I really wanna remember what I was saying. I was saying, and I think this comes with age, at the ripe old age of 27, there's a way to be confident and sound in yourself and in your abilities without being arrogant. I used to have that really nervous energy too and I still get it. I get adrenaline, I'm gonna do a runway show tonight, I will definitely be nervous. But I think you have to use that adrenaline and excitement to make you be present and to focus. You can't allow you to doubt yourself. I don't know, I think that's an age thing. Does that, that make sense? That totally makes sense. In college, I was a little bit scared of getting older. I was like, oh, these are my good years. But yeah. like in reality, you're a better person every year. And yeah. you're like more experienced and more confident. I can relate so much because I think it's like when you we're you know, so young, you feel like you only have this short window of time to like prove to the world what you're capable of. But I think that like life is long. If you want to, you're always going to be like striving to grow and striving to do interesting cool things. And I think you have to just like give yourself a little bit of slack. Okay, I'm going to let you enjoy your shoot and I'll see you tonight. Okay, okay. I'll see you tonight. Oh, is this a this model This is a fashion thing. thing. No, no, this is a fashion thing. You do, okay, do but actually it's I not do, even a do I do I kiss now, you now I'm actually just m making this awkward. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like this. Nope, never mind. Uh, and Laura, you want to get, you want to... Uh, Air case? Uh-huh. Mwah. 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 <laughs> oh! Okay, in, in, like that. In fashion, people do this. This is like a thing. I need to translate this. <laughs> so like an air kiss is like, it's like better than a handshake. Kind of in between a handshake and a hug. A okay. hug is very like a commitment. Okay. And then air kiss is just like a nice to see you. Bye. Hello. And then also sometimes people do one air kiss. Sometimes people do two. There's a whole then language to learn. there's three. There's like an international unspoken language. <laughs> New York, it's usually just one, but you're meeting people for the first time, so it'll probably be a handshake. Okay. Next season when you come back, I'm sure it'll be an air kiss. Okay. This is the wisdom that I'm providing <laughs> you with. Bye, Ashley. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much.
realizing now that my makeup is so crusty. <laughs> let's let's go shoot a Calvin Klein ad. Okay, so kind of last minute changes. They did not send my outfit that I picked out at the fitting yesterday. So we're kind of having to improvise putting something else together. Um, so we have the denim skirt, not in black, but in blue, a bralette. So I'll show you guys what I figure out. I'm trying to wash the deodorant stains off of the shirt that they gave me. Invisible my ass. This is for degree deodorant. You big, fat, white, nasty smelling. 2.6 ounce. Bitch. Yeah, one side, other side. Yeah, okay. Got it. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. Amazing. I just need to move one shirt with you after. I don't know how to do this stuff. A commercial will come at this point, and uh, speaking of commercials, our title, What Do You Want?, is a natural springboard for selling the sponsor's product. So far at New York Fashion Week, I had been to shows inside a literal cathedral, I had been in shows inside historic houses, but this was perhaps the strangest location of all. It was in a giant empty airplane hangar. It was so dark and quiet, it felt like being in the womb, which is like a big ass womb that also for some reason Nicki Minaj was also in. Okay, I'm gonna mute the actual music that was playing during the show because honestly, it like gave me anxiety and I didn't wanna do the same thing to you guys. But it was that like fucking heart wrenching, loud ass, like so loud you can feel it in your body and your body is like vibrating because of the sound waves music the entire show. There were models appearing at random and dancers contorting. And at one point they just started like charging at each other across the airfield. It was intense, man. The, honestly, the best way I can describe it is if you ever seen the movie Mother exclamation point? Spoiler alert, but at the end when Jennifer Lawrence is like mobbed and the mob fucking eats her human baby, that is like the same feeling that I had watching this show. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, like coming out of this show, I felt the way that I think a lot of people feel about abstract art, where they're like, oh, that was so like hashtag deep, like I don't really understand what it means, like it was just kind of weird, but a full two months later, while I was editing this video, I was reading up on some articles about the show and I finally fucking understood what it meant, or at least like a small part of what it meant. And I was honestly really proud of myself because I have been confused about this show for so long. What this show is supposed to be about is kind of our modern day nostalgia for like the 50s and 60s and these times where people dressed in this very like reserved clothing, which you can see reflected in the designs. When in reality, those periods that we look back on as the good old days came with so much oppression for women, for people of color, for gay people. And you can see that like pain and energy in their movements. Oh my God, I sound so fucking pretentious. <laughs> I sound like one of those film school boys who smokes cigarettes and yells at you for not watching Citizen Kane in like every Spielberg movie. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a beanie to find, some jewel pods to smoke, and some girls to lightly body shame at a party. Wait, is that the new Brockhampton song? Is it going? Yeah. You just kind of have to like press this a little bit to get it to focus. Oh, actually. Is it recording? Is yeah. it going? Ashley, do you remember when you said you were going to just take this Fashion Week easy? Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that was a knee slapper, wasn't it? <laughs>
What were your discoveries in the past four days? I think that I have discovered I know much less about the fashion world than I thought. <laughs> I had known about, you know, styling on like an everyday basis before, but there's like this whole world of designers and models that I need to get to know a lot better to just have like industry knowledge. So that's something I'm definitely still working on. For next fashion week, I think it would make me a lot less nervous if I felt like equipped with the information and did like my research beforehand, you know? Yeah. So I don't sound like an idiot in front of people. <laughs> Where do you see the future of fashion on YouTube? Ooh, I see it starting now with, well, I don't want to say the TikTok kids, but like that generation of- The who? Never heard of them. What's TikTok? <laughs> censor that out. It's demonetized. <laughs> They're like mini versions of outfit videos that people are filming in their bedroom. And I think like that movement definitely started on YouTube, but I guess we'll see like where this generation takes it. I've seen so many more people doing like little DIYs on their clothing after school, thrifting, and just having like really funky individual style. I hope that we see a future on YouTube that's more about this like DIYing about personality rather than about like money and access to designer goods, which I think is already moving in that direction. And yeah, fingers crossed. What are your plans for tomorrow? I literally have no plans for tomorrow, which is the perfect plan for tomorrow. Yes. I think I'm gonna sleep. This boy from LA came to visit me, so I'm gonna hang out with him and then we we'll probably just... <laughs> No wonder she's so tired. I think that's, I'll just end it there. All right, perfect. Oh dear Lord. Anyways, I guess that, that's the end of my fashion week. Oh my God, I can sleep now. <laughs> Let's party the night away now. Just, I could use a fucking drink or two. It's an interesting week where there's a lot going on. Um, I'm mean, like, when it comes down to it, it is like clothes. On one part, it's like this beautiful like art and it's like an incredible way of like self-expression and like I love fashion so much. But on the other side, I think that whole world can breed a lot of like, like elitism and feeling like, I don't know, feeling self-conscious and feeling like you're not good enough if you're keeping up with the trends. So I think there's like a good middle ground of like really appreciating it and loving it for like the beauty of it, but also making sure you're not taking it so seriously and like getting wrapped up in it to the point where it kind of like consumes you. Anyone that don't watch this video gonna be like never hiring that girl. <laughs> but it's like a very like self-indulgent week. It's also like really fun, really cool, and I love fashion. And it's like art in a great self-expression. I don't know. To be honest, I nearly deleted all of my footage from New York Fashion Week and didn't post any of these videos because I felt so disgusted with all of it. It just felt like so self-indulgent and so opulent and so elitist that in the weeks following, I was just like, fuck this. Like nobody wants to see me gallivanting around fashion shows, talking about designer shit. I think like anything in the world, the fashion industry has two sides to it. On one side, there is materialism. There's this really like unhealthy, elitist luxury mindset. There are unhealthy body standards. And on the other side, there is this like joy for artistic expression and this art and emotion behind it. And I think for a lot of people around the world, fashion is, this way to like create your own character. And I think that is what it has been for me for so long, like a way to feel like a person that I wanna be, I don't know. I think by default, I am very cynical and I always want to say like, hey, if this isn't doing the most, if this isn't like achieving world peace, saving people's lives, then what's the fucking point? But through editing this vlog, and just like going back and seeing the excitement on people's faces when they were talking about their favorite fashion shows or like inspiration behind their designs or even seeing like my own excitement about all of this, it made me appreciate the space in the world for just like art and entertainment and even though it might seem superficial, stuff that just makes people happy. And I don't think that's superficial. 